It's like a reunion of the old heads here. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of Dante sharing, uh, Dante Trudell, DC train, mm-hmm. of course, uh, sharing a picture of the article that I wrote in Flex Magazine 10 years ago in 2013 uh, about skiff loading. And it was get the cool. fuck off here. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They make us give up this long history of the reputations that we built which was incredibly difficult to do this episode is brought to you by first attachment first attachment is an expert formulated supplement company founded by renowned coach justin harris we've combined science with real world experience in each product we are battle tested are you find your battle today at firstattachment.com All right. Hey, YouTube. Thanks so much for tuning in to the First Attachment channel tonight. Exciting guest tonight, Mr. Skip. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, my co-host, Justin Harris. So we were uh, chatting all kinds of things that uh, cannot be recorded or put on the internet. So (laughs) (laughs) we had some technical difficulties, but also had a chance to kind of chat a little bit. But yeah, welcome. Thanks for joining us, Skip. Oh, thanks for having thanks for having me. It's always good to catch up with you guys. Yeah, gonna... I was pissed. This is one of the ones I've been really looking forward to. I was going to be mad if I couldn't get my camera to work. It's like a reunion of the old heads here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. For those, uh, you know, I, we'll obviously get into it today. A lot of a lot of information. But we were talking to Skip a little bit off air. You know, he's um, from Michigan, and uh, I remember being twenty years old and backstage, and someone's like, "Yeah, I did a skip load," and I'm like, "What is a skip load? That sounds pretty awesome. I want to do that." <laughs> so, uh, whatever you did with that was in terms of no one it never becoming really mass released exactly what it was was pretty magical because. I don't know what if you intended to do that, got lucky or told your clients not to say what it was or but still today I'll I'll see people talk about skip load and and at, no one knows what it is and everyone asks and I'm like god if that if that's a gold mine if you can get like a trade secret like that that stays a secret for <laughs> 25 years I don't know if the, if it's as much a secret as it's, it's people assume that they knew the details of it and anything and anytime you cheated or you ate off plan, it was basically a skip load. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of confusion because people would say, Oh, well, I did it and it didn't work very well. I'm like, well, I don't know. You didn't work with me or what did you do? And they tell me what they did. And I'm like, well, that's, that's why it didn't work. You don't understand. It's just not a free for all. Yeah. You don't just right. throw food in your face and, and <laughs> McDonald's for two days. Yeah. Why don't I look good? <laughs> exactly. He doesn't know what he's talking about, <laughs> which is funny because it, just an odd coincidence, but I had a uh, Facebook memory come up just today of Dante sharing uh, Dante Trudell, DC train, mm-hmm. of course, uh, sharing a picture of the article that I wrote in Flex Magazine 10 years ago in 2013 uh, about skiff loading. And it was cool because I had, and this is more of a personal note, but I had a longtime friend who lived a street over from me and he ended up, we lost track of each other. He ended up getting with another buddy that we went to school with and they became WWE wrestlers. One of them, his friend was Rob Van Dam. So no Rob kidding. Zakowski is how I know him. That's uh, but, crazy. but this guy, uh, his name was Dang, and he went by Dango, Dango Nguyen, and he ended up in the originals and The Walking Dead and stuff like that. But he uh, he sent a picture to me of him. It was over his shoulder. He was having a bowl of Fruit Loops, and he was reading the Skip Load article, and he just yes. passed away uh, three years ago mm. from uh, cancer. So when I saw that come up, it brought up a bunch of emotions. Uh, yeah. Past yeah, stuff. That's- past stuff. Yeah, well, we're that's the that's the hard thing at the age we're getting to now is uh, hasn't happened often, but it's th- those you know those cancer things, those mm-hmm. heart attack things start to happen to to people you knew. It's uh, it's not a not not an exciting. I'm not ready for it. Yeah, I, I struggle with the age thing. I could talk for three hours about my issues around aging, and I wondered if you guys have the same because I feel like know, I'm I, the only one. I felt. Uh, you know, because I felt like a kid forever. You know, I don't my, when I my, like my oldest daughter is 18. You know, I met my wife when she was 20. You know, we we've been together longer than we weren't together. You know, right. she, we've been together 23 years or whatever. And so 
but like when I see these 20 year old kids now, it's like they're, they're children. These, these like, and I'm sure I was too, but I didn't sure. feel like it. And I didn't feel like when uh, like the boards first came out or when people first learned about me, I feel, I felt exactly the same. It was only until very recently. And it was, I think it was largely because I really detrained that, uh, that I suddenly, it's like, it was all of a sudden I start, I don't feel young anymore. I feel, mm -hmm. I feel older and I'm not, I am not ready for it. I'm just really not. I got, I actually have one of those weeks of my life posters on the wall where you, <laughs> it, my wife thinks it's terrible and depressing, but like, I want to know, like, I don't want to waste any of it, you know, because yeah. looking back, there were times you took for granted and wasted it, but I, I am not, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not ready to. I mean, it's, it's a part of life, you know, it, it, it happens, but like I, I, I think about that. I'll, I'll have anxiety about it at night. I'll think back. Uh, I can remember my seventh grade, you know, Christmas formal dance and exactly what I wear, wore, what colors they were. You know, that was like 32 years ago. It's like yeah. in 32 years, I very likely won't be here. And that was, you know, that was, I remember all my buddies. I remember, I remember standing in line waiting to, hand them my ticket, you know, like, and where I was and what, like, yeah. really detailed memories as though it was just a very recent event. And in that same amount of time, I won't have memories anymore. <laughs> you know? It's, yeah, uh, it is. It's a, it's a difficult thing. I, I battle with it all the time. In fact, I quit talking about it with my wife because she says the same thing that it's a very cynical or negative way to look at things, but it's just the reality. You know, I laugh and say, I, I'm 53 and the maturation process has not kicked in yet. I am just as immature as I was 30 years ago. I might be a little bit more responsible, a little bit more reserved, far more compassionate and less of an asshole yeah, yeah, than I yeah. used to be. But outside of that, it, it's everything you're saying. I, I can relate time. Time's a funny thing because every year it just seems to go faster. In fact, we've been here in, down in Florida from Colorado for five and a half years. I like, yeah, well, what? like I remember you... when you moved. Well, yeah, yeah we, we're two and a half years at, at our house here. And that's mm -hmm. like, to me, that was like our big, our built our dream home. It took, you know, multiple years, designed it with an architect and, and it, it seemed like it was never going to happen, you know, and now yeah. like two and a half. Yeah. It's just wild. Or yeah, it's uh, my, my kids going off to college. Things just time moves faster and yep. faster well before before we depress all the uh listeners out yeah. all the 20 year olds we gotta, we gotta <laughs> reel it back in here no. yeah they just tuned out like, I don't know well like you said the maturation oh, process yeah. i have yeah. the, i still have that 12 year old mind i laugh yeah. at the same stupid you know it's like that so it's and i'm still clueless about everything like i think back you know you assumed your dad must have just known everything you know and yeah. And, you know, like, and just had it all under control. And as a father, I think you portray that, you're, you know, you just, you, you know, because no, someone's got to have the answer, right or wrong, you know, and so you it just falls on you. So you just give it. But I think like about that all the time, like my kids look at me as like, I'm like, you have no idea how like a absurdly dumb or like silly ridiculous <laughs> the dumb shit I laugh at, how, how clueless I am about things, how we're, you know, like. How oblivious I am to things that I probably should know at my age, and yeah. but it's what <laughs> it is. Life. Well, I, I think one thing too we were talking about, you know, before we started. So uh, I think a lot of people be interested to hear because Skip, you started in two thousand one, right? With coaching, was that around two thousand one when you started? Uh, it was a couple years after that. I started out on okay. the boards on right the boards two thousand one, and that's okay. when I, you know, Justin and I ran into each other on Anabolics, uh, yeah. Anabolics EX. Yeah, uh, dot com. Bolex. Bolex. yeah, exactly. And, and I think it ended up crashing because it was a really popular board. And then they just they did something wrong and it crashed and they lost like, I don't know, 80 percent of their member base. And from there, it kind of went down. But that was the place at that time to be. It was a, a very active board. I don't know where we yeah. went from there, muscle chemistry or something. But then intense muscle, you know, came yeah. out, or we got that going in 2004. And that that lucky, lucky for me. And I miss it. I lucky for me. You. Lucky for me, that's still where people where people recognize me from. That I mean, you know, God bless you, thank you. But I feel like you real that built my career just the 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 little time I'm there. Because uh, yeah, I, I get too much credit for it though, because you know Dante was a big <laughs> big part of that too. You know how these things work. You get something, you think it's a great idea, and you know you're just having fun with it, and then it just effortlessly 
just like grows and morphs into the thing. And, you know, the timing of Dante coming in and the yeah. dynamic that we had and, and the way that we ran that board was so different than everywhere else. And people gravitated towards it because they didn't want to deal with the bullshit yeah. and the trolling and everything that was on all the other boards. So it really ended up being this great thing. And then we have to see the message boards move to Reddit. We have uh, message boards now. Right. They're just not yeah. message boards They're anymore. Terrible. Yeah. I can't. I, I've tried a couple times to post. I don't. I do it all wrong. Ever yeah. the, like all three posts I have on there are, are just zero views, one comment. Get the fuck off here. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They make us give up this long history of the reputations that we built, which was incredibly difficult to do. On the back then, you yeah. had to learn because, you had to earn everything and earn the respect and if you came in with some shit that they do on social media these days or even yeah. on reddit you would just get destroyed oh, so yeah, it's difficult you, to watch you were it was m m far more combative and i think because it was a little bit more an uh anonymous like uh mm -hmm. scott, scott stevenson was home and Culus on uh on uh and and i didn't know i, I just knew home and Culus. i didn't know scott stevenson i knew this I knew what Hohen Culus was, you know, and I knew this guy's probably smart if he knows what that is. But I knew that <laughs> if I said something and I saw a response from him, it was like, oh, God, I hope I didn't say something stupid, you know, uh -huh. because because people will, now the stuff people put online and it doesn't. That was lar that was largely actually why I went back to to grad school, because it was really a good it, for whatever reason. It became very, very frustrating to me that you would answer something correctly, you know, and then another person would argue against it completely incorrectly but they have all day to sit there and and keep mm -hmm. arguing and they're typing in all caps and <laughs> and the viewers or the readers they don't know which one of you are correct and so sure. it's like you have to decide you know how important is this to me it's not mm -hmm. so yeah but uh and actually With speak, speaking of that and i think i mentioned this at swiss uh but the way skip and i met was that way uh uh skip call uh Base, I don't know, calling me out or whatever the term would be about a practice <laughs> for peak, peaking, actually, because I was a moderator of the nutrition board at Anabolics, Bolix, and uh, and I said something about stems at the end, and I think I said I, I preferred to keep ephedrine in for energy levels, but I tried to remove Clen around two weeks out because I felt like it made it much harder to fill out with Clen, and you 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 actually changed my mind on that. So all my clients are like, what do you mean? You don't take clean out. I don't now because of Skip. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, but, and, and then even worse, because this was the, you know, like in the modern day, you know, you can't go five seconds without being on the internet. You weren't on there 24 hours a day, you know? So right. so I, I posted that and and then you replied, I don't know how quickly, but it might've been two days before I went back on and, you know, and saw it again. And I was like, oh, great. You know, like, I'm, I think, I can't remember exactly what my comment was, but I was like, oh, you know, I got called out for being an idiot and I, you know, I didn't even realize it for two days and you were really nice about it. You were like, no, no, I'm just, I'm letting you know what, what I believe. And I, so we had a good, we had a good discussion. I said, well, here's the reasons why I do. And then you said, here's why you do. And you were like, basically, you know, conditioning is what matters. It says, you know, we can add more carbs. If you, if we can't fill you out all the way, but you're shredded and dry, that's going to win shows. If you're full but, you know, holding a little bit of water, that's not going to win shows. And you ended up changing my mind on it. So, yeah, that's it. And it's funny because I think now in the end, we probably both do the same thing Yeah, uh, yeah. towards <laughs> towards the end. Except if you're a master's guy, because then you have to deal with loose skin. So you have to err on the side of being a little fuller. Yeah, yeah, but good point. Yeah. Loose skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it does change over, you know, those things you learn as you that's a fun, get That's older. a really good topic because you get a double that your skin's thin. So you really, can, if you can fill out and you stretch that skin thin, it's it's mega thin. Oh, but yeah. if you're if you're not filled out, you you look like a melting melted painting. You know, like one of yep, Salvador you look like an old guy, or something. <laughs> <laughs> an old guy with old skin. You're like, oh, yeah. that's not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> going to me. <laughs> going back to that, was that you know something? Um, it, I always felt like in those early days of the boards too, like there was pretty good like moderate moderate you know moderators you know like you were talking about justin with the nutrition moderation i mean was that um something you did skip or like what was your part in kind of running uh the, the board 
Well, I was a moderator at Muscle Chemistry first, so I kind of learned the ropes over there, which gave me a head start because then when I had all the problems at Muscle Chem, I even hate saying the name of the board because the guy was just such a, just a seedy character. And I always laugh and say, you guys know this too, the bodybuilding world has about as many seedy characters as the porn industry. <laughs> yeah. Behind yeah. the scenes, it can get really, really ugly and and there's just some characters um, a lot of them, quite frankly, but not everybody. There's a lot of good people in the sport too. It's a, a wide mix, wide mix. Yeah. But, well, yeah, actually, absolutely. it's funny. Uh, my, my kind of experience with that was coming up your train because you know I train with for sports and football and stuff. You train with your buddies, and then I go to do like my first show. You're training for the Mister Michigan, and all the people from your gym are rooting you on, and other people from the gym are doing the Mister Michigan, and you know everyone backstage, and everyone's really supportive, and it's like this is awesome, you know. And you, you do the show and, and in my case I won and I'm like all so fired up, you know, and it's like and you go back to the gym and everyone at work asks you about it, everyone at the gym's all excited. And then the next year I go to the national level, junior nationals, and the first guy I talk to tells me he's like, My bitch wife divorced me four weeks out. You believe that shit? Four weeks out of my <laughs> four weeks out of my show and she's gonna, gonna throw that at me. I'm like, you didn't you kept prepping you didn't try to save your marriage right you know? exactly and he, you know and then the next guy I talked to tells me how he spent thirty thousand dollars on a particular at that time highly priced compound that doesn't really do all that much mm -hmm. and i just thought there's okay there's a part of the sport i wasn't ready for there's mm -hmm. a you know and then you go to the x then you like you know i was with optimum for a while and you work the expos and then there's the booth girls and stuff and you see like this yeah there's a wide there's the, there's the, those of us who got into it because of for whatever reason we fell in love with the self-discipline and the hard training and making progress and then there's the people who got into it because probably because of deep deep-seated insecurities sure. or or who knows what but it's a, it was an interesting clash for me early on going from that that state level to the national level i think that's the biggest gap in the generations uh, i don't want to get off on a on a tangent but i just right think it's up. important to note that in my opinion, again, as an old head, the, the difference that I see, the main difference is the the guys who've been in it for a long time, been in it since the 80s or even the early 90s, we have a passion for the process. We have a passion for the journey, the gym itself. It's almost like we don't do it to compete. The compete is all the competing or the competition is almost like the I don't I, I can't I don't even want to say payoff because obviously the payoff, but it's almost to see where we rank yeah. in in the you know yeah. and and, and kind of gives us a little bit more of a a vision or a direction in what we're doing but then you have the, the next generation who i constantly question their love and their passion for what they're doing because they can't get there fast enough we all wanted to get big as quick as we could but we all enjoyed the process you get beat sometimes you get smoked and it wasn't this mm -hmm. big pouty thing about how you you know you got robbed and right. it, it was just back to the drawing board. I'm going to continue <clears throat> to get better. I know what I need to do. I'm happy with where, maybe not happy. I'm I'm content with where I am, but I know that I need to work harder. This is what I need to work on. It's just a different perspective, and I think that's where it, it, there still was some narcissism. I mean, I you know the <laughs> egos. You know, I had the ego too, and and I think we all did. And and sometimes not even seeing it in the moment. But if you make those comparisons then versus now, and I understand that social media plays a, a huge part in this as well, because it's it's just all consuming where, you know, the message boards were the message boards. I don't think that it consumed us. We were looking for information more than we were looking for attention. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Training, yeah. you know, even the training environment at that time. <laughs> It was very limited. And I remember thinking to myself, questioning myself several times. I'm sure you did too. Do I know enough to be advising people? And the only reason I did it, it's probably the only reason you did it. People would come to us. Yeah, yeah, we didn't exactly. go to them. We weren't mm -hmm. promoting. Hey, well, there wasn't, a there wasn't coaching, but there wasn't a coaching back then. I mean, right. there was, you know what, like Milos, uh, Chad Nichols, you know, in the mid to late nineties. But for me, it was, it was like you just said, it was, people from the gym were asking for help and I was just offering help. But then I started to prep for a show, you know, and people were, you know, Hey, can, can you, I want to, can you help me? And I'd be like, well, I just, I'm out of time. You know, I don't, right. I'm, I, I'm working, I'm prepping. And then they say, well, I'll pay you. And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. 
but there, yeah. there was well, but it wasn't a thing back then you know where now it's that's all it is you know like everyone i, I was gonna say because i think skip you made a good point there about like the message boards now thinking back like social media it's like look at my biceps look how good i look back then it was like hey i remember we did um me and steve justin we did pictures of uh like our christmas tree but we were like what else do we need to work on that's why we posted pictures on the boards we're like hey what you know how's this pose look like what else do we need to work on and it, and it wasn't like social media it was like one post every four weeks or something but well, i can prove how non-vain we were and you guys will get it we chopped our heads off right yeah right? exactly so, yeah, yeah so yeah. we weren't really getting much attention there because we thought for sure the dea was in the bushes <laughs> yeah, because we were talking true. about <laughs> testosterone so then yep, you fast yeah. forward 25 you know, 25 20, to 20, yeah. 25 years and now you have online trt and they're trying the government's now trying to battle that to put more restrictions around because it's so socially acceptable it's it's a funny thing when we move to a point where trt is accepted but you get in and in the same breath the same people are blasting the rock and everybody else are being on steroids bitch yeah. you're on steroids yeah. you're just not yeah, taking it, as much as we are yeah <laughs> it, it, what i'm seeing is my the females getting put on testosterone and testosterone have you been seeing that like i have but we might have a different opinion on that i and i don't i don't know again it's i'm not, not i'm not for or against it I, i'm just blown away by it, it, it that it, it seems like like all my guys with low testosterone have to really work unless they go with a specific trt clinic their their doctor they have to really work to get you know any kind of treatment where it seems like every I'll have a 42 year old female client and I'll just get an email one day and she's like, Yeah, they did blood work and they said my testosterone was low, so the doctor put me on 25 milligrams of testosterone. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I understand. Yeah. I thought you were going a different direction. I'm sorry. Um, but only because the internet is so well, in my experience, the internet has will crucify trainers sometimes, especially male trainers, for having any of their female clients on testosterone. I think testosterone is great, but that's I only learned that because my wife's uterus fell out at 33 years old. Mm -hmm. So when she had a full history, I love saying that because I, I just wish she could was on the other side of the computer to hear me because she hates when I say that. But she had a full hysterectomy at 33 and I had to fight with her OBGYN and endocrinologist to replace that testosterone. I literally got to the point where I told my either you're going to do it or I'm going to be her pseudo endocrinologist and I'm going to do it myself. And it was at that time, this is like 2003, four, five in this six, I think. And because we had moved back to Michigan briefly when she had surgery, but uh, endometriosis really bad, had to take a uh, full hysterectomy. So uh, I had to take everything with a full hysterectomy. Sometimes I talk very, very fast and it's not keep my brain is ahead of my, it gets ahead of my mouth, but that's where I learned how significant and how important that testosterone is in dosing. But, as with anything else, it comes down to, you know, dosing and, and the frequency and, you know, um, virilization and, and things like that. And everybody yeah. being, being, well, different. I just, when I see it, I always wonder, is it, is it because female hormone prescriptions are already so incredibly common, you know, conjugated mm -hmm. estrogens for, and so it's, it's, if, if the doctors just are, you know, for basically from age 13, you know, half, half the women of the, of the country are put on some kind of, you know, uh, sex hormone where it seems so much more difficult for the men. I just always think it's interesting because it's like the men have to go to a TRT to right. have any clinic, have any chance where the women it, that's, if they, you know, and it, the hormones in general, just, it blows my mind because we, we, we try to like anything else that's out of whack, you know, you if your cholesterol is high, you know, it's not like an argument or a debate or, if you, you know, like whether or not they should get your cholesterol down or Sure. any other marker any other like thing that they measure on blood work if your thyroid's low they don't just say like well you know you don't you don't really need <laughs> thyroid you know yeah. You, you like, can't cheat. I mean, you yeah. can't take that. And But, you know, isn't that society, though? We just it really we kind of um, it, it's what society accepts as being OK by the masses. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to go too deep, but, you know, drinking alcohol is accepted without hell drinking and driving you get slapped on the wrist for and yeah. i think it's egregious i think it's it's horrible mm -hmm. and and yet we're so kind of um uh, not brainwashed but we're so we're so trained to think that oh that's just common and that happens and oh yeah have a fourth of july party and and invite 30 people and don't have any alcohol sure <laughs> exactly. you know like you'll, yeah. be the, you'll be the worst person on earth yeah i mean everyone just automatically assumes Yep. No, I agree.
Good stuff. Well, as we kind of, you know, just transitioning, looking forward, I mean, I think, uh, can you talk a little bit about just because we'll bounce around. I don't want to skip anything for the people listening because we'll enjoy this conversation a lot. And then they'll be like, Hey, you guys didn't ask him about this. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, can you talk a little about just your early stages? Like, you know, I'm just really, I'm sure a lot of people out there are just interested to hear about how you got into coaching. You know, you mentioned that we were emailing a little bit and just about, you know, yours was just kind of combination of trial and error, common sense, you know, self-taught, uh, all your methods and things for the most part. And, uh, can you kind of walk through just how you got started in coaching and what that looked like? Yeah, I think it was just, and we touched on this a little bit earlier, and that is that people were reaching out to me and, you know, part of it was because of the nutrition and the dieting. Really, I had this long standing. if I was born with a gift, it certainly wasn't genetics, but it was the ability to think outside of the box. Like I saw rules or accepted norms that I thought this, this just doesn't logically, this is nonsensical. This doesn't. So I, that's where the trial and error came from. Because again, you, there weren't coaches at that time to reach out to. There were people that I had respect for, for their opinions. And I would ask them, but I got out of baseball because I didn't like losing when the right fielder dropped a fly ball and I had thrown two guys out at second and went two for three. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, I was already try, trying to transition into something more, more self-centered for lack of a better word, where I would succeed or fail by my own merits. And I'm proud to say, even though it may have held me back to some degree, it has pros and cons. Maybe it didn't help hold me back, but I never have worked with anybody. I will take opinions from people uh, of whom I respect. And, and I know that they have experience and they have a, you know, a solid knowledge base and that sort of thing. And I respect their opinions, but I've never worked with anyone. And that's where the trial and error comes into play. And I think it was the, the skip loading. I, I was fortunate enough to kind of be taken under Zilla's wing Oh, with wow. shitloading and and really there's not I one that name in 20 yeah, years. i know right exactly and i still to this day want to know who he is and where he's at because i can't i can't thank the guy enough which quite frankly um i don't know reverence and and deference is missing from <laughs> from this generation too but i digress um it, he was the really the single most important thing in, in my almost 40 years of bodybuilding was this guy taking me under his wing and really not only giving me knowledge, but answering my questions and taking so much time and effort and then allowing me to take that method and and encouraging me to build on it and, and kind of morph it into like, kind of make it better because it worked really well for guys who weren't terribly big. Like if you were maybe, you know, through your middleweights and some light heavies at work, but when you got heavies and super heavies, you couldn't fill them out fast enough. So that's when I started playing around with it a little bit. And I think that's where I, I'd started competing again after 10 years. And I was, mm -hmm. I, I, I always say this because I think it's important to note. I was a slightly above mediocre bodybuilder at best. I had a chance to win my class if mediocre bodybuilders showed up. And if badasses showed up like they did in 09 at the Junior USAs, then I would get beat badly. I didn't have the genetics. I had the work ethic, and I felt like I had the knowledge. I mean, I've proved that with, with clients over the years. I think my track record is, is pretty damn good. But it's no surprise that I'm now working with more – clients who are genetically or metabolically challenged where they have worked with a handful of, you know, good trainers before, and they either didn't get the attention or they, they, that trainer didn't want to pull away from their very specific methodology to really yeah. find out what works with them. So it's great because, you know, in this game, relevance is difficult. I remember Dante, ah, I shouldn't have said Dante. That's not fair, but it was Dante. And he did tell me early on, he laughed at me and he said, you don't honestly think that you're going to be able to make a career out of this and like do this when you're 50. So when I got closer to 50 and I'm looking around my beautiful house and I've spent, I've sent two of my four kids to college and nursing school and everything. Like, yeah, bitch, I did. <laughs> but staying relevant, and we had no way to know. I mean, he wasn't right. giving me 
bad advice. He was giving me advice like, you know, don't, and he had no way to know. I couldn't look to anybody else to go, how do I build a business doing this? I mean, it, it, yeah. again, that was trial and error as well. And I've got a good story about sitting my wife down at the Applebee's and with my little presentation, but I, that I don't want to, I'll stay on task here, but on topic, but yeah, it, it just kind of it, more and more people came to me. And the more people I helped, the more people that came to me. And with Intense Muscle, I had this giant platform of people. And then I did, you know, those things like, um, I don't know if you remember these or not, Justin, but kind of ex, um, they were, I'd take on like eight to 10 guys at once. And it was kind of like this, it, I can't remember what I called it. It was something like an experiment experience like i would have this idea and i would talk about it and people say they want to do it and i'm like god i've got my client base over here i don't know if this is going to work it worked for me so i would take on eight to ten guys for a significantly reduced amount of money per, per and we would run this like trial type thing uh and i can't remember what i called it but it would be for roughly 12 I weeks and then they would remember talk that about it. yeah and, and I, I remember... probably did that 10 12 times so it, it it just helped because then people would talk about, hey, yeah, I did this, uh, you know, with, with Skip. And a lot of times I would get guys who couldn't afford to work with me one on one, but they could afford those experiments. And they like to be a part of it because then from a business standpoint, see, I'm not the, I'm not terribly bright. My business acumen at that time was not very good. Uh, I was learning as I, as I kind of went as I was, as I go, but it, it ended up working. I got lucky because then they would talk about, it. they would talk about it on other boards mm -hmm. and then more people would come to me, whether it be professional muscle or people even outside of those boards. So it kind of just morphed into um, something that I had, I, I got into, I'm just going to be honest. I got in to pay for my gear because yeah. I didn't <laughs> want that money coming away from my kids as I was working with kids in juvenile delinquency, or I, I worked juvenile delinquency and um, juvenile treatment. And as much as I love the job, it didn't pay very, very well. That field is notorious for not paying terribly yeah. well. It did make mm -hmm. me a better parent um, and maybe a more compassionate person, but the money wasn't going to be there. So I eventually shifted to working thirds with the kids and I built intense muscle all night. I started doing my client work all night. And to this day, even with the kids not living here anymore, I have one still at home. She's going to college. She's our youngest is 18, but they've all... You know, we've empty nested. I still work until four or five, six a.m. Right. and I sleep until one or two because I did it for twenty years. It's bizarre to me to be up at nine o'clock in the morning. So I got lucky. The the long and the short of it is, is I careful what you wish for because eventually it does turn into work. You love what you do or you don't do it. Um, mm. You owe that to your to your clients. If you're not invested and you don't care and you're running after money and we see this, we've seen this, I've seen it from trainers for years and they get greedy and they start cashing checks and then they can't keep track or they don't want to keep track of their clients because they're too busy counting their money or spending their money. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, a, you, that's a really bad thing because yeah. I don't know, I'm sure you've seen many, many of them over the years, but how many people are hesitant to hire a coach because of a terrible experience with an, a previous coach that basically took their money and never emailed back or never responded. I would like to think I was one of the, the earlier coaches who preached. There are a lot of good trainers, especially back then. Uh, and there are now too, but it's a giant sea of turds. You have to sift through all the bullshit <laughs> to get to, to figure. I feel bad for people who don't know where to go. It, it's really difficult, but, um, you, you, I don't know. You, you just, I, I feel like I was one of the ones that really kind of pushed that. Yes, there are a lot of people who can get you good results, but there are different methodologies or different paths, you know, a thousand different paths to get to the end result. You can climb a mountain, you know, there's a bunch yeah. of cliches, you know, a thousand different trails, but you also need to take care of your clients because I know early on, and, and I, you guys probably remember this too. You could pretty much be a dick. You could be arrogant and you could be like, I, I know everything, you know, just do what I tell you to do. And you don't have to ask any questions and, you know, just, just execute. trust the process. Ex exactly. <laughs> it, it, yes. It, yeah. <laughs> that one's hard not to go down that rabbit hole. Oh, right man. There. But yeah, I agree yeah. because yeah. Uh, when, and I would tell clients when people say, when they don't want to answer your questions, they probably can't. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, they're not just paying you for results. 
they should be paying you for your experience and your knowledge. Yep. People should walk away from working with you. I, I've told this to clients forever. You should walk away from me and be able at some point, sometimes longer for some clients than others, but to be able to handle your own nutrition and, and training to a large degree on your own. So if you continue to work with me, it's because you want to, and you mm -hmm. want to continue to learn the the minutia, the, the minor details of everything. To and, and then what happens? Everybody turns into a trainer. So then everybody is working with everybody to basically suck their their information and their knowledge. And they're going to work with 40 different people and then run off and, and take seven yeah, and, show yeah. and, and they're going to be, I could be a coach, but well, that uh, is, a, I think I, I'm sure this has happened with you too. And I, I won't name any names, you know, because, because I don't think it benefits them in any way. But one of my prouder things as a coach is how many really well-known coaches now uh, were a client of mine very early on mm -hmm. and were one of those people that were very inquisitive and they really wanted to learn the process. And True. so it's like, it, 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 to me, that's a really cool thing, seeing these names that I remember when they were an 18 to 20 year old kid, and now they're a well-known coach. I'm glad you bring that up because I don't want what the comment that I said or the way that I may have said it to take away from those people, because you're absolutely right. It's incredibly flattering, and it's a reminder that you're old, but it's also yeah. a reminder that you played an <laughs> integral part in someone else's passion and for them to build something as well and become very good at what they're doing. Uh, not only do they become, you know, have they become great trainers, but you know, I worked with a lot of guys who were just starting out in their first two, three, five years of the sport. And a lot of those guys have gone on to not only get pro cards, but to be balanced individuals who have relationships much like we do instead of the dirt bag who doesn't have any relationship with their kids is still le you know living that that very narcissistic lifestyle oh, and can't yeah. maintain a relationship and that's a part of part of bodybuilding that was very very rare you know 15 20 years ago so when i oh, see the dirt bags Doug Dale you know Doug uh, Mark Dugdale the Justin Harris is those guys I like to see that. And I like to see when the guys come on and we interview them, whether it be Nick Walker or someone like that, who is very, they have humility. They understand mm -hmm. how good they are and they're confident, but they're not assholes. And if you mm -hmm. go back 15 years, the vast majority of these guys <laughs> were assholes. And if they weren't coming in, the, the sport would chew them yeah. up and they would be fed that, that anti-humility pill and they would start to just, devour it and then they turn in there was one in particular and i won't mention his name high high level pro who may or may not have gone on to win several olympias who i remember like it was yesterday telling him in the back hall of a gym in denver said to him i said i don't think you understand how good you really are and he said and he, he was kind of like you think so and it was just very it was a very honest reaction. He didn't understand it. And I told him, I said, if you do nothing else, if you take no other advice from me ever, don't let the sport fuck you up and change you and turn you into a shit bag. The, who, the person who you may or may not be talking about, <laughs> uh, I, my, my, uh, my client took second to him in his first big national level show that would, he would have would have taken first, you know, ninety nine out of a hundred hundred years. <laughs> Look, I mean, yep. looked absolutely insane. But he, we, he, um, one of the more like I don't want to say mind blowing, but one of the moments of all my bodybuilding career that really, really st sticks with me and stuck with me was backstage with all the athlete stuff, talking to that individual. We were at, yes. all at a, at a table and seeing. And and everyone knew he won the whole show. Just even in he was wearing like a long sleeve black t shirt. And we we knew not only that he's gonna win that show, but that he's gonna win the next several shows he did and probably mm -hmm. as many as he wanted to. And we were just <laughs> blown away, you know. But but talking to him absolutely blew my mind because we were talking to someone who knew almost nothing about the sport. Right. You know. And, and we were just, we just, we sat there with our jaws on the table, you know, that this guy looks the way he does. And he's a very, very nice guy, mm -hmm. uh, very humble. You know, I don't know, I, I'm assuming it sounds like he stayed that way. It was, I think at, at the time he had no idea how good he was because he knew nothing, right. nothing about the sport. But we were just like sitting there telling him like, you're going to win Mr. Olympia soon, <laughs> you yeah. know? And it, and it wasn't that many years. What was it? 
It wasn't six that years many years. Yeah, it wasn't that after yeah, turned pro. Uh, five, yeah, he, uh, six, oh, five. But, to, uh, now I'm going to give it away. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it was six. Every, every <laughs> <one over. laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah, but yeah, you're absolutely actually, right. Nice guy. And it, and it, yeah. it, he, and whatever to each their own. It is what it is. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I wasn't in his position. Maybe I'd a turned into a bigger asshole than I was on the boards. I don't know. I'd like to think that I wouldn't have, but who knows? It's hard. I mean, when, yeah, I can only imagine. I've never, you know, and everyone's telling you the second coming from the, from your first competition, basically. Yeah. I imagine it would be hard to stay humble, but he appeared to, to, to at least to some extent, it seemed like he had good mentors too. He fell mm -hmm. into the, the correct people, you know, like another, uh, Another former team nationals champion who was also a multi uh, Mr. Okay. Olympian winner kind of took him under his wing and basically built the guy who who ended up being his his successor. You know, like right. it was so yeah, he's he's hung around the right people. Yeah, but uh, yeah. it's it's funny to say that because just backstage we we're looking at this guy and we're like, why is he, he is why is he not at the getting ready for the Olympia? This, yeah. Is this you know this guy's competing? Like, not we know knew what he was. Oh, because yeah. he kind yeah. of been on the boards like there was already a, a buzz about him but yeah. we the whole place knew who overall was at, at weigh-ins didn't know what an anti-estrogen was while he yeah was oh i could tell you i could tell you even more yeah <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy the conversation i have I'm like you do understand that fish isn't gonna make your skin thin but whatever i mean listen <laughs> listen to your guy it's working for you so <laughs> I wish I could, <laughs> let me yeah. stay out of it yeah i wish i could tell you some of the other stuff because yeah it was like Truly bizarre. Absolutely. Oh, man. Bizarre. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, it's uh, to kind of wrap on the site too. So you still have intense muscle right now, right? Yeah, I do. I still train my clients out of my uh, private client forum every day, uh, forever and ever. Hallelujah. And, you know, it's got tumbleweeds there, you know, as far as the active members and stuff, I think it might be down to like 200 active members. But I tell you, I'm still surprised that after it'll be 20 years in February, uh, next February. Uh, yeah. 2024 but there is still a massive amount of very in-depth uh very detailed um debate discourse with everybody from john meadows to dusty hanshaw to justin to steve kukulo to phil phil had posted on there phil heath uh just if you don't know which phil i'm talking about uh <laughs> phil viz viz carl you know phil viz uh mm -hmm. when he first started out i mean i was the guy who took him under my wing he's still uh, and I appreciate this because I think it's lacking in the industry. I, I always appreciate that he still continues to this day to give me credit for uh, for taking him on and helping him. And I, I I'm flattered by that. I think that because there's been a long it's a long time. And, you know, Phil has his moments where he can be an ass, too. Course, but he always yeah, yeah. shows like we all do. And, yeah. uh, he, you know, he still shows. um you know, a bit of reverence. I, I look, I'm an old guy. I appreciate things like that. I think, right. I think that's cool. And I do think it's missing in the sport. I always gave that credit to Zilla. I continue to, to this day without him, no one would know who I am. That's the thing about the industry these days. I laugh sometimes and I, cause people say, well, how, how do I get, I want to do what you do. You know, you did and do what you do. I'm like, good luck. Because if I were to try to break into it now or five or, you know, seven or eight years ago, I would have struggled as well. I got lucky because of the timing. I got lucky because I had a niche as far as skip loading really kind of did put me out there. It made it, it, it intrigued people to look, they weren't going to look at me for my physique. They weren't going to look at me. My conditioning was good. It was good for the time, but if you advance another 20 years, everyone is shredded now and they make yeah. my condition look like I, you know, I'm still six weeks out. But at that time, it, it was a combination of the conditioning and the method of doing it. I, look, I don't want to give myself too much credit here because I didn't reinvent the wheel. I put a different name on it and I tweaked it. You know, branding is everything. <laughs> but oh, I, yeah. I tweaked it and I fine tuned it and everything. And I did come up with a method that people could use, not only just my clients, but people who'd never worked with me. And if they really did their due diligence, I still had people come. They stopped me at Swiss and be like, oh, you know, I followed you. I did this. I did. It was just this great thing. I've had people beat me on stage and go, yeah, skip loading. I'm like, I don't want to fucking yeah. hear that. I don't really <laughs> care. Like, I just helped you smoke me. Uh, not that I, they weren't going to beat me anyway. But to hear those things, it, it, it after all this time, I, I would like to think, and Justin, seriously, correct me if I'm wrong, but until the skip loading thing at that time was kind of coming around, 
it was a very antiquated process of torture yourself to get lean with tons of cardio, low calories, drive yourself into the ground. And then why did it start? It, skip loading started or that type of method started because all these guys, myself included, started to look good a day or two after the yeah. show. That's yeah. what got everybody's attention. And, you know, this is where I say I'm not too bright, but I was bright enough to go, this needs to be looked at just yeah, a you, little you bit more. That. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it, I remember, because it was uh, the thought, the, the, the statement was always, yeah, I look better after the show. And it's like, well, well yeah, but you're a little watery. That wouldn't have looked yeah. good on stage. And everyone left it at that. A smart person, which I, I'll give you credit for being the smart person and not me because I didn't do that, would have said, well, how can I refine that a little bit right. so refine that... It. Yeah, so we don't we, we we don't go to that point. We stop at the at the right point. Another right. thing I want, I've been wanting to say about the forums, and I think is a perfect uh, a, like a why the guys who grew up in the forums appreciated them so much more than social media. Uh, if you go to social media right now, go to Instagram and see any post, and you'll see, uh, you know, for every post there might be three comments, and and two of them are you know send pick at DM for what some page you know. Right. If you go to a, an old thread, you'd have one post with sometimes 1300 comments, mm -hmm. you know? And so it was, Instagram is all pictures of, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. And no one replies. The forums were a few threads of here's this thing. And then everyone discussing and, and, you know, and learning and debating and just a completely reversal of how it is. And sure. it was, uh, you know, the, like you said, I never even thought about the, the heads cut off, but that's the per, that's yeah. like the, the really good way of looking at it. But yeah, because no one knew who we were. Right. We were all. Yeah, it's like oh, I'm in name. my I'm in my underwear too. I don't know if I want the picture of my of me in my underwear <laughs> on the internet. Now it's like that's yeah. Not, now it's that's, pretty yeah. acceptable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's funny. But, <laughs> no, that that is interesting too. I think I think when I prepped as a teen, when you guys are saying that, like I remember cutting sodium out like the last like five days yeah. and like no water for three days or something. Yeah. And I remember a, I remember a guy like, telling me he didn't brush his teeth for six weeks, yeah, yep. because of sodium fluoride. And I yeah. was like, dude, you but, get a... <laughs> well, but at the same time, let's let's go the other way because I that's one of the things I've done since I've started it you know, get older is I try to look at both sides because sure. I feel like, you know, whether it's a political thing or a social issue, uh, you know, trans and, and all this, I try to see the other side because the side that we sit on is always the smartest side and everybody else. Yeah, is so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to take it in from their side and think, okay, what is, you know, what is their thought process and what, and the sodium issue at that time is a lot like that in the sense that we kind of had to go over there to that side, to that extreme, to be yeah. able to come back to the middle and kind of let that pendulum settle in the middle and go, okay. And we learned so much by getting out there on both sides. And that's what brought it to the middle. And we go, Oh, cause I, you guys, I'm sure say the same thing that we, you know, we were saying almost 20 years ago, the quickest way to go flat is to cut your sodium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we, yeah. Now, for four or five, six days. I mean, I remember telling Hans when I prepped him, like, bruh, we can't do that. I know you've been doing this shit a long time. We can't do that. So, and, and I got to work with Hans. Uh, you, you know, you being from Michigan, you know the oh, legendary yeah, know guy, Hans, Hans Underground, and Lady, oh, yeah. Lady's awesome too. But how I, I was able to play a part. You have to understand, he was a huge mentor to me when I was a teen. He was a huge dude. That dude would walk. He was a five by five. Yeah. And then, I, and then, and when, when he'd tell me, I remember the first time I met him because my <laughs> first show was the Capital City Classic, like four weeks before the Mister Michigan. And he put the show on and he was real because I, I had strided glutes. And so he was really cool. He he came right, right up to me after weigh-ins. He, you know, basically told me that, you know, because this wasn't even a national qualifier. I had never, you know, I just wanted to try to show. And Steve Kuklo did it with me also. Joe, mm -hmm. Joe, did you do that one? You did not. You I, did was the I was there. I was there. I did. But it was, sure, yeah. he pulled me aside, you know, both of us, you know, and like was really kind uh, you know, and said like, you know, you got something here, you know, are you, you're doing the Michigan, right? And I said, yeah, I said, he's like, you got, you know, you're going to win this show. No one comes into a show like this with, you know, strata glutes and, you know, very, very cool. And then, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this guy who's twice my size, you know, and I weighed at like 213. And I'm like, oh, what do you like? What do you compete at? Super heavy? He's like, no middle. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you're, you look, <laughs> yeah, your arm is a middleweight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He, I, I took him uh, the last time I competed or uh, worked with him. He competed at the North Americans, and it was the last time he was. I pushed him, had to push him to go into the light heavies, and I I was so flattered because Shelby reached out to me about a year after that. He goes, I, I've never seen Hans in that good a condition, I know that the size. One yeah, yeah. And it yeah. just felt so good for me because again, I was a 16 year old teenager when I met him. Uh, the I'll tell you off the uh, when we were done how I met him. And um, it was him. And and I don't know if you go back this far, but um, uh, Brian McGee. Remember that? Yeah. Name? Okay. Uh, Brian hey, McGee. Uh, go, get t- time to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, here? <laughs> you know, the stories of Brian McGee. I, real quick, I got to tell you this. I went to Flex, uh, Flex Gym on the campus of Western Michigan, right up there uh, underneath Electric Avenue, basically. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going, I'm in there and it's just a shithole of a gym, but it's a badass little gym. And um, 1980. 889, I don't know. And I come in and this little midget dude who was jacked, but he was in the squat rack and he's pulling on 315 and he's going crazy and the whole gym's watching him. And I'm thinking to myself, he's going to squat 15, 315. Is he going to do it like 20 or 30 times? Like what the, what, what's going on? He backs out with it and he starts pressing it over his head behind (laughs) his neck, behind his neck. And they were ugly, but they were moving. And I just was slack jawed. I couldn't believe what I had just seen. But the thing I'll tell you when I, when we get off, I don't want to, because I don't know (laughs) Brian very well. Um, I knew of him at that time and I don't want to, out of respect for Hans, I don't want to, I don't want to say, but um, great guy, Hans and Laney, both to this day, I still keep in contact uh, with them and, you know, always hope that he's doing well. They've been married for, forever and that's just that whole just, i'm not hans, surprised to see hans I drive, running i used to shows. drive used to drive past hans about once a month take uh taking my kid to daycare him and his wife oh, okay. and yeah they still they still <laughs> live around here that's cute that's cute yeah, and really brian McGee, i i haven't trained at a real gym because we have a gym in our house now but i brian mcgee is still at still going no to the kidding gym. no yeah, kidding still i knows everyone's name he's a great guy every time yeah yep yeah. yeah. Still here, here to work. Here to work. <laughs> That's funny. I think he's probably added a few uh, catchphrases over the years. Oh, I'm sure. Character. <laughs> so pretty strong, too. I bet. Yeah. Well, what, one uh, kind of factoid we haven't talked about was your passion for, for writing. You were uh, you shared that a little bit before, and um, I think that's probably attributes to a lot of your early success, the message boards. But can you kind of talk a little bit about that? I know you've uh, write a lot on like elite FTS and have some other aspirations with that. Yeah. I <clears throat> secretly, I would love to write mainstream. Um, it, it's an odd, and I don't know why I haven't pursued it. I could, I, I do have a couple connections with it. I have friends who do write, uh, kind of do, they do freelance work and stuff. And I could do that. Um, obviously we're very busy in the industry. So when I say that I'd love to do that, it's not, it's just not something that I find downtime for, but I have oddly, um, as much as I'm a meathead at heart and I did not do well, terribly well in school. I, I, my wife always hates when I talk about this, but I graduated high school with a one, six, six cumulative grade point average because I would pick my classes based on the teachers who would pass me while I was reading muscle magazines in the back of the <laughs> class. And I'm not, and I'm not kidding. I'm not proud of it. I think it's more of just me being honest and and accepting a flaw that I had when I was younger. And there was nothing that was going to motivate me to do it. I Mm -hmm. couldn't play sports and I was a hell of a baseball. All three Um, baseball was my big one. Basketball. I was pretty good at football didn't like to get hit very much, Uh, but it was a guy sport. And with me starting to train, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. But when I couldn't play sports, I didn't care because my passion again, you know, was, was changing over to, um, you know, being in the gym. So, I didn't have to, I was pass. I was going to pass and I was going to graduate high school. And that's really all I cared about. If I had it to do over again, I would have focused on, um, you know, writing and, and syntax and stuff, because what happened was I started writing and I really fell in love with it. And it helps when people tell you that you kind of have a natural, sure. I don't want to say it's not a gift, but the way that I would write, I was told was very conversational and it was entertaining. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's what made me go, shit, okay. But then I started having this clown from Elite FTS when I started writing for them because I wrote for the magazines, all of them except um, Iron Man. 
And I was quite proud of that because I always wanted to be in the magazines and apparently was not going to get there with the physique that I had. So I would go, <laughs> I found another way to get into magazines, but this guy would um, bust my balls constantly, he trolled the shit out of me on elite. And that made me want, cause he, he was basically saying I was a terrible writer. And I know looking back, he resented the fact that I was able to write for them and he wanted to, but that didn't yeah. change the way that I, took it so personally and it was an insecurity of mine. Mm -hmm. So I really focused on learning the rules that I never learned. It's kind of like um, playing the piano without being able to read music. Yeah. You, you can understand that you have a little bit of a gift to do it, but then you're mad at yourself because you're like, why wouldn't I learn how to read music? Why would I not learn proper sentence structure and punctual? I was always good with punctuation and spelling because I, I always told my kids this for years. You don't have to be very smart if you're good with punctuation and spelling because spelling. you'll come across as being articulate and, yes. and educated spelling and, especially. Yeah. and and it's the other way around mm -hmm. too you can be intelligent and educated and if you don't use proper punctuation and and sentence structure you're going to come across as not being very educated or very smart so i really started to look into that now i'm to the point where i'm very incredibly pedantic and I can't stand when something is grammatically incorrect because it's just something that is now in my brain. But I have I I am I, I'm in two types of, of forums on Facebook, cat forums because <laughs> I'm an allurophile as well. Uh, now that the kids are gone, it's like my cats are my kids. But nonetheless, the other thing is is I'm um, in grammar forums, and mm. these these people are next level. They're ESL teachers, they're professors, and I just sit back and don't say. Kind of like the boards, you don't say yeah, anything because you don't want anybody to think you're stupid. You know, you don't want them to know you're a meathead or that I write. God forbid, I would never tell them I write. But the things that I have picked up and the things that I have learned, I could go through my phone right now and I have a category of 150 <clears throat> words because I'm always impressed by people who have at what I call an A-list vocabulary. So if I see someone say, you know, I was watching Billions a couple years ago, and um, I call him Pig Vomit because I can't ever remember his name. See, that's what he is to I me. The and he said, isn't that funny? You can't get around that. Well, I'll tell you even, even funnier because that movie came out. I mean, it was a little older now, but when my wife and I uh, first started dating and I would like tickle her and she want, would want me to stop, I would make her say Pig Vomit. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, 23 years later. That's, oh, yes. It will and be he's in, a great actor. It's yeah, too we'll bad. Be in public, and she, I'm found tickling her. She's like, pig vomit. <laughs> well, he used the word rodomantating, and I immediately picked up my phone, and my wife's like, uh, so she stops, you know, pauses it. And I had to know what rodomantating meant because I did not know. I had never heard that word. But I've got 150 words in there. I have rules, you know, if – I am just very the lie, lay, lane. Uh, he, you know, she and I, uh, him and me, the, the rules, so that I don't want to screw those things up when I write. I don't care if yeah. I text. If my friends text me, I'm not going to bust them. Yeah. But I'm not going to write something that I can be picked apart for. And I ended up finally writing a an article about this guy because I it was around the premise of me thanking him that even though it bothered me to my core for so long that it pushed me to be a better writer and learn those rules and proper syntax and 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 sentence structure and all that that good shit so that now that I when I submit my article Sheena will tell me Sheena from Elite that she doesn't have to edit she likes yeah, yeah, when I because right. she doesn't have to edit, and I love that right. because then you're not messing with my style or the way that I write uh -huh. either. Yeah. And I just I feel I feel good about. It. I would love to write at a higher level. Um, you know, I know I'm writing for meatheads. I'm not going to win a Pulitzer, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> but I really, really enjoy it. That's cool. I re well, I, as a side note with that, I. I, I I had good vocabulary because I read you know I mean not like I re I read a lot of magazines I guess more but I think you can kind of, you could typically tell someone's vocabulary by reading and I read a lot of science magazines so I would get you know but my writing was so terrible as far as the grammar and punctu or as far as the punctuation it, looking back it I can't I I don't think I could go back and read I I put a comma every third word whether it needed yeah. it or not and I remember editing. I did the first comprehensive performance nutrition, you know, and I thought it was ready to rock and printed it off. And my wife, who knows all the rules, <laughs> I, I said, you know, gave it to her. And 
30 minutes later, she's on page three with red everywhere. And I, yeah. I, I was like, I was embarrassed. <laughs> I was really embarrassed because once you then once you learn the rules, you're like, it, they're not hard right. and there aren't that many of them. Why did I just, you know, and then, cause you, you know, basically you're, you're presenting yourself as a, I don't want to say a buffoon, but really that to someone who does know the rules, because it's not like you don't know the rules because they're, you know, like astrophysics. You don't right. know the rules because you just never bothered to take the 10 Sit down and figure it out. Oh. Yeah. And 95% no. of people aren't going to catch it. Yeah. It's yeah. the five or the 3% that are going to yeah. bust you for who versus whom. And I always laugh and say, if you don't know the difference, just don't use whom because no one's going to yeah. bust you for using who incorrectly, but they're damn sure going to be those guys like me. who are going to yeah. be like, now you're just trying to sound intelligent. I refuse, by using to, no. use, I refuse to use whom <laughs> because of, of the, on the, because I know no matter what, I'm not going to get in trouble by not using whom, right. exactly. but if, and I know the rules, but if I, if there's some weird chance that I don't, there's a part of the rule I don't know and I use whom incorrectly. So yeah. I refuse to use whom. That's funny. That's my, funny. Yeah. My wife's an English major. So oh, I, had, goodness, I, had to, yeah. I had to, I had to clean it up when we got to that. <laughs> I definitely grew up on the, uh, uh, the lower end of town. Let's just say so was, <clears throat> she's like, Joe, like we need to clean this up. So I actually did. I went back and took a you know, I mean, basic level, but a college writing course to kind yeah. of like relearn the rules. So I'm like, I'm not going to learn this. So I, you know, went to the uh, local thing. This is a while back, but I'm still, still a lot of work to do, but yeah, hundred percent. I'm like, I'm not even running in the right person. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm writing it, like I'm reading it. And they're like, no, no, no. First, for, the first things first, like you have to write it for the reader. I'm like, oh, that makes yeah. sense. Like, yeah. duh. Like just never thought of it. It really you know? is an important thing too, because it's the only way we, we give what's inside our brain to the rest of the world, either speaking or writing, you yeah. know? And so to not, to not be efficient at it is really a, a disservice to yourself. You know, I think Jordan Peters, Jordan Peterson, uh, I can't remember the bodybuilder is Jordan Peters, but Jordan Peterson said something about that. Like, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to go into, de, in, into war, like with arguments or debates or whatever, you know, why would you ever do that without the proper tools? Yep. Because that's your, the only way of you have of fighting for your beliefs is, is your words. Mm -hmm. Yep. I completely agree with you. Well, uh, one thing uh, I want to make sure we hit too, and, and then I know we're, we're coming up on time here uh, for you. So yet we appreciate you joining us. So I don't want to uh, overextend that. Um, uh, but you, your your podcast. So you have a podcast right now, um, with uh, and you had Phil. Uh, you mentioned Phil Viz earlier. Right? Yeah, Phil was, was on. Was... Phil Viz was on last week. Yeah, I, see, I thought I saw him come through. So yeah, blood, sweat, and gear. And before that, it was uh, PD Radio. Can you tell just everybody out there maybe doesn't know about it a little bit about um, blood, sweat, and gear and where they can find it and. What's yeah, blood, there? sweat, and blood, sweat, and gears on YouTube. Uh, it's also on uh, what is it? I don't even know if it's called iTunes anymore, but whatever i can't keep track of it you, we transitioned like everybody else did uh we fought it for a little while but we transitioned to the video in in audio uh four or five years ago and it was a good move because you can have both if you don't want right. to see us and you don't want to look at us because i look old and i don't know what i'm talking about which i have gotten several times but it is what it is uh you know, it's just something that you, you guys know with podcasting. I mean, when we started with PED radio back around 2013, I think it's 2013, man, it's been a while. <laughs> um, it was just, you would sit down and you would just talk and people wanted to right. hear what you, oh, you know, they, they know what they're talking about. We just want to hear what they say. And it was very um, informal, very unprofessional. Uh, the audio and the, <laughs> well, the audio at the time, because it wasn't visual at that time, uh, was just horrendous. And you know, I complained like I always do, I guess, over the years where, you know, you do something and then everybody else is going to do it. And in fact, in, in to give Adam McVeigh credit, you know, he had geared up and he did a very good job with that at the time. It was very, very popular. And he can't, you know, he was blasting anybody who would come out because apparently he invented the idea of podcasting. But nonetheless, I'm guilty of doing the same thing because it, when something becomes successful for people, then, then other people get on to, and everybody's got a podcast, which is another thing that I'd never tell the people that work with my wife, what I do, uh, mm -hmm. because I would never say, Oh, I have a podcast. I think they just podcast. made a movie about that with one of the, uh, uh you know, what I'm talking about the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and and that was the, I'm like, oh man, there's another reason I don't want to say, oh, this is what I do. But um we wanted to kind of try to set ourselves apart because there are so many pockets, just like there's a lot of trainers and everything else. And right. you, know, you can't, again, it's staying relevant. It's providing quality information, of course, but that's not too difficult to do. And I don't want that to sound arrogant, but if you've done something for so long and you've been doing it for a long time, there's just a lot of experience there. So you're not going to get too much wrong with that, but you can, you can be wrong with not providing, um, you know, good audio, good visual, right. uh, not being organized, not being prepared, uh, not being on topic, rambling, talking about too many, you know, personal things, making too many jokes. There's just, mm -hmm. there's a lot to it to do it well, and we're still fighting to do it well, but we're putting in so much more effort. And the cool thing is, is we are seeing that payoff where, mm -hmm. um, we're able to not only pull in more listeners and viewers, but we're also able to pull in, you know, the Nick walkers and the people who do want to be on. And then they come on and they have fun and they appreciate that it's professional, that it helps them to, um, you know, have a platform as well right. to have a little bit of fun and, and get their name out and get exposure and stuff like that too. So hopefully it continues to, to grow. I, I thoroughly enjoy doing it though. I would rather write, than I would to speak because I write away. Anytime you can proof, if I could proof what I say, I would be, <laughs> I would be happier because I was told to me one time, it's like, you speak with semicolons and M dashes, Skip. That's why you write the way. And it's exactly how I, I will stop a sentence halfway through and think, oh, I can say it better and go back and start it over again. That's why I've never been terribly good speaking, but I can write because I can go back over it you know, 20 times if I want to, before I put out that, that final product, but I do enjoy the podcasting. I see myself doing that for a while, provided that it continues to grow. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's awesome. Definitely. Uh, yeah. I've enjoyed some of that content. That's kind of why we reached out. We're like, Hey, I remember this name. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So That's cool. yeah, we, we, we don't have audio yet, but we, uh, you know, started with YouTube and kind of, you know, it's uh, funny you say how far purchase. they come along. Cause I remember doing, I think the geared up podcast, even with my iPad sitting on my bed, you know, yeah. like holding it in front of me, kids yeah. chirping in the background. We're now, you know, like, well, you saw my camera problems to get this started today. You know, <laughs> I got, you got, you know, you're, you're, expensive camera on a mount with it your you know expensive mic and you got to run it through a focus right phantom power whatever the hell they're called <laughs> you got it you know your back for fast and, internet you know, speed right yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you got to give you a, the, the rat that little squirrel or uh, little hamster on the wheel that runs my internet i got to get them a little meth beforehand can't have your kids being yeah. loud in the background oh yeah, yeah. Wife yeah doing laundry behind you yeah. or so, yeah yeah <laughs> well, we'll we'll take it home here. We uh we usually do a, a round we call shoot, move, communicate, and so it's a little bit more rapid fire. But some of you, you know, feel free to go on a tangent if you want. So, uh, <laughs> and some are short short form, some are more kind of open. So I'll uh, I'll knock them out. We'll go through them and then we'll we'll wrap. So okay. Uh, the first one is uh, just professionally speaking. Uh, can you share an accomplishment, one accomplishment that you're really proud of? professionally um first thing that comes to mind is i we were able to raise four kids uh relatively successfully i know it's not professional but it's the first thing that comes to mind and quite frankly honestly uh, at the risk of sounding you know kind of dopey about it that ranks much higher than anything i've ever done professionally uh, i would have never thought that i could have raised four kids with my wife stayed married and um been able to be successful and, and happy with, you know, what I'm doing with building a business and, and that sort of thing. So uh, awesome. professionally, I'm very happy with, you know, I, you know, the business and stuff I'm still very proud of because there just wasn't, I, I never would have thought that I could have done any, done anything with it uh, outside of just being what was, what is now termed as a side hustle and yeah. um, turn it into something that actually fed my kids and allowed me to take them to everywhere they needed to go, coach them, uh, to the point where my wife these days says she missed out on so much and that I didn't because she had a regular job to go to and I didn't. Yeah, that's awesome. No, thanks for that. Uh, next one is what what accomplishments um, with a uh, an athlete are you most proud of or, or sticks out to you? Well, I always enjoyed working with Jimmy. Um, you know, you 
played in the NFL for quite a while. And I worked with him the last six years uh, of his career. And he still reminds me that I was an integral part of him staying in the league for those last two to three years. And awesome. especially the, well, and the cool thing is, is I probably had more fun when he was with the Minnesota Vikings, the second and third year before he retired, but he ended up getting a ring with the giants that last year. And that was um, pretty cool because we had become very good friends to the point where I quit taking his check mm. every year because I just told him I couldn't, I just couldn't, I didn't feel right taking. He was, as far as I was concerned, he was family. And when you're at that level. And he was have, struggling, you know, as sure. an NFL player. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it was one of those things. He, he had a hard time paying his bills. Yeah. Uh, but, but no, I think what it did to him, though, especially at someone at that level, it helped to solidify the fact that we really were friends. I didn't need to ride his coattails and and he had a lot of that in his life already. And yeah. I think that that really, um, to this day, we still keep, I wish we were in more contact and saw each other more. He's in Arizona. I keep saying, I'm going to go out there. His son's doing very well in football and could end up being a prodigy. It's awesome. pretty crazy to watch. Good stuff. No, oh, thanks for that. Next one up is uh, one word, uh, one word of encouragement you give to an up and coming coach. So someone who wants to do what you do, what would that, what would that be? <laughs> My cynical side says to get out, um, <laughs> leave it to the, leave it to the veterans. No. Um, um, you know, that's a, that's a tough one. One word. Um, I want to say, you know, rapport, client rapport, learn business. Um, if I can't, I don't know if I can nail it. If I can pin it down to one word, though, you got and I don't think I've three. ever said one word in my life. Right. We'll <laughs> it's give a you hell three. of a challenge. Yeah, you're the, you're the guest. So you get to make the rules. I just, I just frame it up. So. Yeah, B business <laughs> uh, because so many people do know, and there's a lot of people with a lot of knowledge. I still, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I want to say this real quick. Yeah, I still think Nate Wolf would have been an incredible. I, I just wish he would have stayed with, and I understand why he got out. He got out for the reasons that we've complained about for the last 20 years, yeah. but that guy still, if I was going to work with somebody to this day, he'd be one of those people on a very, very short list. That's who I, that's who I'd work with when I yep. competed. He's the, he's the one I'd send tricks to. Yep. Great. Awesome. Uh, one word to describe your ideal client. Uh, I, the first word that comes to mind is execution. Mm -hmm. Um, but rapport uh, again uh, there's a theme here um it's not anything like gifted it's not anything like i i guess that's yeah rapport yeah. And, and execute awesome all right this one's uh, more about you if you had to miss one what would it be a meal a night of sleep or a training session oh i like that um definitely a training session yeah, I don't enjoy training as much as I use. I enjoy it when I get there, but getting there sometimes seems to be incredibly stressful with everything that needs to be done. That's awesome. when I said earlier, I feel old now. That's where it is. Yeah. I love it when I'm there. I love it when I'm there. I don't even, I, it hurts now. It just, <laughs> right. it just, right. It's different. It used to just feel great. We're yeah. now. I think it's more out of obligation these days. Yeah, I know yeah, that I can't yeah. stay in shape without it, but I yeah. know I can get a lot further staying on my diet and miss a few sessions yeah, than I can yeah. to go off my diet because I turn into a pig very, very quickly. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and no sleep, that's not going to happen at 53. I'm I'm horrible with no sleep. I, I'll kind of adjust this question because you, you, you've kind of alluded to this, but I'll still ask it. Um, is there one, you know, one parallel that you've taken from business that you apply to life now? Um. First thing that comes to mind is just is structure. I, mm -hmm. I think if you want to be successful in anything, even raising kids, um, having kids and and keeping track of everything and staying on top of everything, I think you need to be incredibly organized and, and highly structured. And I don't know if that's necessarily from business or maybe if that came from me originally and it helped me to build my business, balance my family, be relatively successful or successful for me in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. But it, that's the first thing that comes to mind is just yeah. is just structure. Awesome. All right. Well, last thing we talk about, you know, we're at first attachment, we say, you know, we're all in. So we talk about like passion projects, things like that, that we're all in on. So we always like to ask our guest, you know, what is something that you're currently all in on? What comes to mind? You know, that's a tough one right now because with the, 
it, we're in a transitional phase because of empty nesting and moving here from Colorado. And after raising the kids there for 21 years, we don't know uh, whether we're going to stay here, whether we'll go back to Colorado. Um, we're not, we need to do, and we've had conversations about this. We need to do more. We always had fun things to do. And right now we're not doing fun things. And it, it's a bit of a, I don't want to sound like it's because I'm not depressed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit of a lost feeling of my wife and I after we have our 30 year anniversary coming up in August. Oh, nice. And um, we need to we need to have more fun instead of feeling old and uh, sitting down on the couch after, you know, like we're exhausted. I told her the other day we used to train all week do our jobs, raise four kids. And we couldn't get out of the house fast enough on a Saturday night. We yeah, had more energy yeah. than we could. Do. And we're just like, oh, I was just watching Netflix. So, <laughs> so there isn't a, there isn't a lot of passion outside of I'm, I'm unfortunately focused and I feel it. Mm -hmm. I'm unfortunately focused on things I've always been focused on. And outside of that, I am missing a little bit. We used to ride motorcycles a lot. We used to have those types of hobbies and we don't have those things down here. So sure. we need to get that figured out. I can't give you an answer to that, to be honest. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that though. I think it still just makes, you know, makes us all like reflect and process a little bit, right? Little human. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, again, thanks so much for joining us tonight. I mean, for the viewers out there, be sure to check out, you know, Intense Muscle on Instagram, uh, intensemuscle.com. Um, you know, we have uh, Blood, Sweat and Gear, the podcast, the YouTube channel. Um, thanks for again for, you know, you've been putting out content since, like I said, the early 2000s. Just awesome to connect. Um, I think I saw you on Elite is when I reached out to you um so again we really appreciate you coming on and i'm sure uh you and justin had a fun time reminiscing tonight so no i appreciate yeah, you okay. yeah i mean i probably as much as anyone owe my career to to skip when i, I mean still oh, yeah I still still today the the majority of the way people say they first learned of me was intense muscle still wow. today yeah, yeah. See you doing that presentation at Swiss. I'm like, oh, and I'm sitting back there, white, pale, fat, can barely walk because my QL is so messed up from gaining 40 pounds. It was, it was pretty cool, but it was nice to run into there. I really appreciate you. I really, I'm flattered that you guys would have me on to be able to reminisce. It's very nostalgic for me. And when you get old and you're screaming at kids to get off your lawn, <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to have a smile and a laugh about, you know, the last 20 years. I appreciate yeah. you guys. All right, guys. Have a good night. We'll see you. We'll <laughs>